Welcome to Digital Asset News, like a top stories in crypto, and bringing on a bite-sized piece. And today, just as the thumbnail suggests, it's pretty important to uh, do a little bit of diversification as far as risk management. So we're going to take a look at uh, things that I found that really helped me as far as like taking a look at uh, the different categories that are out there. One goes up, one comes down, and it kind of balances everything out. We're going to take a look at potentially a little gem I may have found called WonderFi. And lastly, we'll take a, a little uh, Q&A from a friends of the show, uh, Ian from Token Metrics, to see how they actually balance out their portfolio for different categories in the crypto digital assets. So we'll go over all those things, but first, just as a quick reminder, we are in the uh, big sale season. Christmas is right around the corner for uh, everybody. So just so you know, uh, Unstoppable Domains, you get a BOGO, you get buy one, get one free, as far as like uh, the NFT domains. Uh, you can find that. So you can go right to Unstoppable Domains and uh, pick it up, but there's a link in the description. Also, shopping.io, if you use crypto on their platform, at uh, the very top here, it says 50% off. That's up to 50% off if you shop at places like Amazon, eBay, Walmart, and Home Depot. So check that out. And that's uh, in the uh, links in the description. So before we get into the category, let's just take a look at what the heck has been going on lately. We've taken quite a tumble. And uh, we talked about this in yesterday's video for the three different reasons uh, why these things are going on. And uh, the three reasons, one of the big reasons, is this variant coming about and people freaking out on it? Sure, okay. And then we had uh, some uh, expiration of futures and people getting liquidated. And, uh, you know, these things happen. And also we, we took a look at uh, the Fed as they kind of, kind of scale back things and what that could mean for traditional markets. And, you know, uh, because a lot of different institutions and traditional players are now in the crypto space, if the stock market tumbles, so does the crypto market. Unfortunately, that's just the nature of the beast as we let these players in. So right now, we're sitting at a, a whopping uh, up 1.31%. <laughs> market cap is around 2.5 trillion. We were, we were above 3 trillion. And then for some reason, we just happened to misplace that $500 billion. Maybe we'll find it sometime. But uh, the sentiment is looking pretty good. We're using trade the chain for sentiment analysis. And, you know, almost 60 out of 100, because I think people know... This is exactly what happened in uh, uh, April of 2020. Uh, we had that black swan event. And now here we go for, there was a Delta variant. Now we have an Omicron or Omicron variant that uh, just came out and people are losing their minds. So we'll see if it really is the big deal, like how uh, the Delta may have been. And I don't, uh, just it just depends. And I'm not here to debate if it exists or doesn't exist. What really matters is, uh, is that the real aspect of what it's done to our market so that's what we have but i will I, I have noticed a couple couple of things that has really helped uh, my portfolio out and that is this is that for as time goes on and i see like my blue chips like uh the bitcoins and the ethereums go down which is a bummer i must I must must say uh there's other plays that uh, kind of counterbalance it like uh like my metaverse plays i've been buying land uh, to Centraland and Sandbox, and even the tokens themselves have uh, gone up pretty well, even like a phantom here. Uh, so if we can kind of take a look at those different aspects as far as like what is uh, coming up and how to balance our portfolio, because in, in these days, now it seems like um, crypto is really diversifying. I mean, before in 2017, it was all just cryptocurrencies. And now it's about, well, uh, what, are we talking about? what are we talking about for like uh, for storage type of tokens? What are we talking about as far as like privacy? All the privacy is already there. Uh, NFTs, uh, metaverse plays, uh, L1s, L0s, and everything in between. So we can really diversify to see what is going to actually last because now we have uh, a more thorough approach as to what these cryptos and, these, and, and I like to say digital assets can actually do. And I always knew that that's why I named my channel Digital Asset News. I knew in the future it wouldn't just be cryptocurrencies because there wasn't just currencies. It was assets. And assets are what we all really want to own and move towards. And that's why I named my channel this. So um, when I'm taking a look at, at what is going on as far as uh, the different uh, diversified plays, there's this little trick I like to do. Uh, this is CoinGecko. And let me make this a little bit better to see. So blow it up a little bit more. So like here, we can see the market cap and everything else, but right up here where un, where it says show stats, 39.51%, there's this thing called categories. And I'd love to click on that just to see what's up and what's down. And we can see right here, everything that it's, it 
separates them into the different categories that they are. And some are kind of loose because sometimes you'll have like gaming tokens overlap with metaverse tokens and NFT tokens overlap with metaverse and, and so on and so forth and avalanche ecosystems and, and so on and so forth. But you, you can really drill down into what they are. And you can take a look at <clears throat> like smart contract platforms in the last 24 hours. These as a whole are up 0.4%. Binance Smart Chain up 2.4%. Uh, stable coins, I like to look at those just because I, I talked about before, because I think once people start to sell off their crypto, they go into stable coins because they're going to get right back into it. They don't want to go into the US dollar because uh, that is degrading. Uh, and then Avalanche Ecosystems, NFTs, 1.7% down in the last 24 hours. But then look at this, like, I mean, Cosmos Ecosystem, I had no idea. Last 24 hours up 6.2% and it's up 11% in the last seven days. Uh, gaming is up 20, almost 21% last seven days. Metaverse, 16.4, only down 2.2. DEX tokens are actually up 2.2 in the last 24 hours, and so on and so forth. So, and then of course, storage tokens like Filecoin and things like that up uh, 7%. So when I see these things, I can, I, I start to see how the traditional finance world has their categories and how they diversify. And now we really have that over here. And then there was this one I mean, analytics, that's nice. But there's one down here at the very last. It's uh, tokenized stock. And you see it just zero across the board. Zero, zero, zero. And there's really nothing in there. But there was this story that made me kind of sit up and take notice, which was WonderFi. And WonderFi, um, I just thought it was interesting because what they're trying to do is tokenized assets. And what we have here is that it was just listed on FTX. So real quick, just to bring this into play, uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, WonderFi Tech today announced the listing of tokenized shares of WonderFi and FTX. And this is from FTX CEO, Sam Bankman-Fried. He says, look, in many countries, investors don't have easy access to North American securities markets, or if they do, it can be costly. It's not open 24 seven. WonderFi's tokenized shares will commence trading on FTX on November 24th under the ticker WNDR. And I was like, okay. Then the, the thing about WonderFi is that first of all, it's backed by um, Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful there himself. And uh, it looks to be just a very emerging type of platform as far as DeFi and what it can do, but also tokenizing shares of stock. So I was thinking to myself, I'm like, well, this is pretty interesting. Maybe I can get on get on FTX. But of course, when I download FTX Global, you're gonna get this uh, if you're in America. <laughs> usually, you know, you can't download that. Sorry, or North Korea. It's kind of funny if you're in the, in the U.S., Cuba, Crimea, Iran, Syria, North Korea, or Sudan, uh, you can't download it. Everybody else is fine, but that's it. I can I can download FTX.pro or .us, but uh, it's not on there, and it's just such a new thing wonderfy tokenized stock if this is what it is i'm not even for sure it's what it is because it's just so new getting out there it i mean list the website at ftx.com uh there's no volume there's nothing really going on and we'll see how it works but i'm going to do a deep dive into this but as far as like the categories i was talking about tokenized stock that could be a pretty interesting play i don't think it's going to be available to the U.S. with the SEC breathing down our necks and all those things. So, yeah, <laughs> on this one, I think it's a, it's a pretty interesting play about what's going on. So, again, as far as like diversifying, it's all about the risk and your risk management. So when I'm looking at things, I'm going to try to diversify a little bit more. And what I want to do right now is uh, bring in friends of the show, Ian from Token Metrics, and uh, they've got an AI platform. And I'm just going to ask him because we were talking a little bit about about this same thing. And I said, how do you... I go, Ian, how do you do it? How do you, you know, diversify your whole portfolio? He's like, well, I just do this, this, this. I'm like, great, come on the show and tell my people. So he's going to talk about how he does it. Oh, and we, sorry, and before we go into that, uh, just real quick, the audio is kind of bad because something glitched out with uh, the microphone, and that was probably my fault. But the information is still pretty good. It's only about 10 or 12 minutes, and then uh, that should be do it. So everybody, as promised, what I want to do was bring somebody in who could really help us talk about diversification because I think... Right now to put all your eggs in one basket, probably not the best thing to do, especially as the cryptoverse really starts to expand in different categories. So Ian Bellina from Token Metrics, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to, to be back. Yeah, well, I need you back because I need your help. Because <laughs> we need to figure out the best way to, to really diversify. And there's, there's, 
so many things going on. Like I see the blue chip uh, cryptos. You got your Bitcoins and your Ethereum and things like that. I see the, the play to earn. I see the metaverse play. I see the NFTs. I see the the uh, file coins and, and, and the storage and the L1s and the zeros. So the question I'm, I'm trying to get to is, Ian, what's your play these days as far as to, to save yourself as this market has been, you know, bouncing all over the place? How do you guys do it uh, over there at Token Metrics? And just teach us some things about how to just be a little bit safer. Yeah. I mean, so the first rule when it comes to building a portfolio is to diversify. Right? You have to make sure the assets you're holding are not highly correlated with each other. Right? What does that mean? Right? So let's say your portfolio is nothing but Ethereum and ERC-20 tokens, right? Built on Ethereum. That means most of your portfolio is correlated with Ethereum, with Ether. If the price of Ether goes down, most of your, most of your portfolio will go down. You want to have a portfolio where you have assets that don't follow each other. That means if Ethereum goes up, you should have some assets that go up and vice versa, right? So the way I view it is, is in sectors. And so beginning with legacy markets, you would have equities, basically stocks. Then you'd, other, you'd have other forms of investments. You'd have real estate investing, which is not correlated with stocks. You'd have art, same thing, which, which has no correlation with stocks. And an average investor would have a portfolio that's fully diversified, right? Maybe even adding commodities in there. Yeah. Now, for the first time in crypto, we can replicate this in crypto. Crypto is now developing new asset classes that don't really have too much of a correlation with regular crypto. I right? mean, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and altcoins. Right? So this year, for the first time, we have an art sector. We have NFTs, non-fungible tokens. Non-fungible tokens, for me, I view them as digital art and as part of my portfolio. Right? So I've gone out there and I've put a lot of money into some NFTs. For example, having a board ape, having uh, mutants and other NFTs out there, mooncats and others. And if you notice, the correlation between NFTs and Bitcoin, Ethereum, and ELVs is, is kind of opposite, right? Sometimes when, when crypto goes down, NFTs go up and vice versa. So it's a good hedge to your portfolio. And now with Metaverse, uh, we're essentially getting what I think can become not just a new asset class, but essentially the digital version of real estate, virtual real estate. So in the same way you would have a portfolio full of real estate, whether residential, commercial, what if you can go out there, buy land in these virtual worlds, whether Decentraland uh, or Sandbox, and then rent out this land, earn yield be, um, from gamers? Because my, th my, my theory is this. If crypto is going down, but crypto is going mainstream or metaverse is going mainstream, these gamers will not care. These gamers playing these games um, will, will want to buy land regardless, right? Because it's finite. So that could be a hedge and a way for you to earn yield and to diversify your, your, your portfolio. So me personally, right now, one of the things I'm looking into is metaverse and especially how to earn yield uh, despite the market, right? So at Token Metrics, now let me pull up uh, my, my dashboard here, if you don't mind. Before you do that, and it's, mm -hmm. before you do that, it's all a good point. And then when you talk about, first of all, when you talk about like, like artwork and NFTs and things like that, like I, when I look at diversified portfolios, especially like with artwork, I never really, you know, got it. And then when we take a look at like masterworks on on my side, because you're talking about the NFT, which is which is the the virtual uh, part of art, and then of course masterworks. Because when you said to, to go back to what you said before, which was gamers don't, don't care, they're still going to play the game, right? And then as far as like uh, for artwork, multi multi millionaires don't play by the same rules as us, and they don't care about what the market is doing. They want this Basquiat. They want this. Blah, 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 whatever else you, you, you mm -hmm. can talk about as far as like a really nice painting. So for fractionalized artwork, that's why I diversify into uh, masterworks. And the thing that I've been seeing lately is that as my other blue chippers go down, and I've been talking about this like the last two or three weeks, my other metaverse plays like, you know, uh, they've been going up. The Sandbox, Engine Coin, Decentraland or Mana and things like that. So. I think it's like it's like a perfect marriage just to kind of like go, oh, I'm not totally in the red. And this is actually buoying my my entire portfolio. So let's take a look. Uh, let me help the, bring up your screen there. OK. Yeah. So this is the token metrics page. Yeah. So we go through using our AI and looking at thousands of data points from market pricing data to on chain data, sentiment data. And we go through and create a grade that's back tested on products we think will go up and we rate them on a scale of zero to 100%. So 
So right so, now, the way I, I use this, yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say, just to make sure, I see on the very top, you've got Avalanche ecosystem, Solana ecosystem, non-fungible tokens, Polkadot, Cup. Yeah. So you can- So you right have, now, I'm, yeah, so right oh, now I'm okay. looking at this based on sectors. And right now we're looking at the metaverse sector, uh, right? Because, so let's say you want to add metaverse coins to your portfolio to diversify, right? How would you do that? And so we just go through here by sector. We have gaming, we have play to earn, we have yield farming, right? And looking at this right now, our AI loves products like Ave Goche, uh, Illuvium, Yield Guild Games, Starlink, Vulcan Forge, the Sandbox, which has done very, very well. I see Vulcan Forge is up almost 30% today. Um, then we also have Phantasma, uh, Vulcan Forge. Yeah. Yeah, on, on a bad day, Vulcan Forge is up a lot. Right, uh, we have render token, engine coin. So for somebody who wants to build a, a portfolio, this is a good list of coins to go through and curate and maybe do your own research, maybe see which ones you like, which ones you think are good long-term. Because right now we're looking at this from the, the daily score, right? We could also switch to weekly and see which other ones they likes for the next week or so. But in essence, this is giving you a, a guideline in terms of for the next month, what coins do we think will do well in this sector? And for the most part, these are the, are the coins that, that have been doing very, very well, regardless, right? So we view this as a way to go through and either one, trade sectors through sector rotation, or two, create different baskets of portfolios for different sectors to diversify your crypto portfolio, right? So we also mentioned uh, art and NFTs. If we go to that, this, these are the coins our platform likes right now. I will say this, as that loads up, I'm looking at Avagachi and it's got a market cap of $219 million. And then you look at something like Sandbox is a market cap of 7 billion. So if you're looking at things of like, what could pop off? That's a pretty good one. All right, so and yeah. NFT plays, let's see. Yeah, so coming to NFTs, we pretty much have lots of similar coins. So if somebody wants to do a dip on both NFTs and Metaverse, uh, we have Yield Games again, Avegoche, Vulcan Forged, Render Token, Gala. Gala has oh. been doing pretty well recently. Yeah. Ultra, the Sandbox, right? So this is the way I view in terms of building a portfolio. You want to make sure that what you have uh, is diversified and is, is not correlated with each other, right? Because as I mentioned before, you want to make sure when something goes down, you have something else in your portfolio that will go up that's not correlated with that asset going down. Makes sense. Hey, scroll down real quick. I'm looking at the, the last one, Unity. Mm -hmm. 75 million NFT. market cap, that's it? Yeah. Oh, I mean, uh, so if you're looking for some altcoins, you can filter through here based on altcoins and see if there are any low caps that you think would be good. Okay. Right. And then real quick, Ian, tell, because how do you guys do that? How do you guys uh, sift through that information? Because it's all AI, right? Yeah, it's so automated. So we pull in data from different data providers, uh, pricing data. We run quantitative metrics such as um, the ROI, the shop ratio, the volatility, uh, and then we, we basically compare that versus other versus all crypto assets. Uh, we also yeah. add other data points. So, for example, um, if you go here to analytics, we have on-chain data, we have sentiment analysis. So all these are metrics that we leverage, right? So if you drill down here. You get even more more data, right? So, for example, um, let's say you're, you're just truly trading this, and you don't really care so much for all the other data points. Right? We'll go through here and kind of tell you when we think is bearish and bullish, right? But in terms of data points, so all these metrics, I think this one is actually too new for people to to get data on because it just began listing. But if we go to Ethereum, for example, and we go to the performance metrics, right? Yeah. Uh, looks like it's taken a while to load, but basically would have data points that traders use, right? And these data points are what we use to come up with the actual grade. But the grade comes from us backtesting. So let's say we have 1,000 data points. We backtest all those data points, uh, and we're trying to see which ones actually matter for getting a great ROI, a great return on your investment. All right, so we look at thousands of data points, so including quantitative data points, such as the cumulative return, the compounded annual growth rate, the sharp ratio, Satina ratio. Uh, if you go to details, we have even more data points we look at. Uh, and then we also have even other data points, right? All these are data points that are used by quants. 
And we have this for over 8,000 crypto assets, uh, plus other data points, uh, such as on-chain data, sentiment analysis. And we put all this into a machine lear learning model, and we have a back test to see which data points actually matter for predicting which coins will go up, right? So this model is constantly evolving every single day, every week, every quarter, uh, to basically fine tune itself as the market changes to try to find the best coins we think have the best likelihood to go up. Now, obviously it's not perfect, but it's, but it's been doing pretty, pretty well, right? It's been early in lots of projects and we use this to then uh, predict which coins we're bullish on throughout the whole market as a whole. Perfect. Yeah, and I think that's that's one of the big things. It's kind of hard to take all these data points and put them all together for ourselves. So, okay, that's a pretty good play. So I like this. So Ian, real quick, tell us again, like just for, for you guys, if you had a, like like a pie chart as far as diversification, you'd have your blue chips, you know, in one little sliver, and then the metaverse would be another sliver, and then what else? Yeah, so I would be basically, I would have layer ones. Uh, so me personally, I have Ethereum as layer one. Then I also have a hedge to Ethereum, which is uh, I have Avalanche Network. I also have um, one other layer one that's not really tied to either of those, Helium Network, which has done pretty well. That's done over a 400x in the last few years. Um, then I have NFTs. So I have Bored Apes, I have Mutant Apes, I have Mooncats and other NFTs. I have some Metaverse NFT projects, such as Treeverse, which is about to launch. That one I'm very bullish on. Uh, I have Creature World, which is an NFT slash Metaverse play. Uh, and nice. then I'm looking into metaverse real estate, basically virtual real estate, lending out land, right, and earning yield on that. And so that's something I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking to dive into in the future, right? Uh, then you could also add other sectors, right? So essentially, if you view your portfolio as different baskets and making sure those baskets aren't really correlated with each other so that when one goes down, the other should still boost your, your portfolio up as a whole. And I think that's how somebody could survive a bear market. Awesome. Yeah. And we sure need that. That's for sure. Especially right now. All right. So I, Ian, I also brought you on because it is a kind of a special day for you guys. Tell us. Yes. Yeah. It's our two year anniversary, two years of Tokenmetrics. Thank you to people like you and your community for, for the support. Uh, and it's also Black Friday, right? So to celebrate, we're doing something we rarely do. We're giving away 40% discount to Tokenmetrics for anybody who joins the annual plan. All you have to do is uh, just uh, using Rob's link down below. Uh, during the checkout, put in the code happy B day 40. That's H A W P Y B D A Y 40, uh, all caps. And that will get you 40% off of token metrics for on any annual plans. So thank you to your, com your community. Yeah. Well, great. Well, thanks. I think we learned some things and then we also got a great deal. We'll take it. All right. Uh, that's it for that one. Ian, any Last words of uh, sage wisdom for everybody, especially with this bear bull market. Who knows what it is right now? It is uh, always yeah. changing. What do you got? Yeah, I mean, uh, do a deep audit on your portfolio and make sure whatever you're holding are assets you believe will be around in the next five years because we don't know when the music will stop. Even though I'm bullish on crypto long term and also bullish on the bear market continuing, uh, we always have to make sure what we're holding is one, diversified, and two, is a hedge. Uh, versus other assets and uh, in crypto and then three we like it and we know why we like it that way we can weather the storm perfect all right ian you've said it all you said it all man thanks thanks again for coming right. on we appreciate it all right buddy thanks so, thanks, you're welcome links in the description let's jump back all right look so i hope you got some some value out of that again links are in the description you can do however you want to do it i just thought it was interesting how to balance out your portfolio by doing different things and it kind of makes a lot of sense as far as like making yourself a sort of de-risk what you're doing and that's it so look if you found some value give it a thumbs up if you like what you see consider subscribing that's it for today so thanks so much for watching i appreciate it and i'll see you on the next one